We're here to talk about the key benefits of the Microsoft Dynamics 365 customer service application. The customer service workspace is built for agents and managers who work with customers to resolve issues every day. Customer service and sales use the same core tables, so things like accounts, contacts, activities are shared between teams, so collaboration and visibility to the whole customer is seamless. Customer service agents can take advantage of the same technology benefits as other CRM users, including integration to Outlook, Sales Copilot, Teams, and SharePoint. An agent will use a dashboard like you see here to manage their workload. In this example, we're looking at My Active Cases, so cases assigned to the logged in user. It's also showing all cases in selected views, so these queues. So these are the queues that I can see. Um, so this is all of the available work that's not yet assigned. And then it also shows any open activities, so uh, details don't get lost in the shuffle. So things like follow-up calls, um, appointments with customers to resolve cases, all of those details would be surfaced here. Queues can be configured by your organization based on your needs. So that could be a queue by team. It could be a queue by product. In this case, I have common issues that come in, and I have certain people that can work on particular items. So system down is a higher priority. I want to make sure uh, cases like that are routed to the best team um, to be able to resolve that. And annual maintenance would be maybe a different team. So you can have automatic routing, or you can have a manual um, selection. So in this case, if I want to take, um, let's say all of my cases are in a status where there's nothing to be done right now, so I'm ready to work on another issue. I can select that from the available queues and pick that item, and I can pull it from the queue altogether because I'm going to be working on that. I will be accountable for uh, that problem. A service manager might use a different dashboard to look at what's going on from a higher level. So all of the active cases, um, how are they assigned? Do we have the appropriate workload balance, kind of keeping tabs on the kinds of issues that are coming in over the course of the week, the month, and the year. Now we're ready to drill into a particular case. So I'm just going to take this broken element case, close our co-pilot here, take a look at some items here. So the business process flow at the top of the form is really the journey that your case takes. And you could have a variety of different journeys based on product, based on issue. Um, and underneath the, uh, the targets here, the, the stages, we can have certain fields uh, predefined um, and required based on needing information at that point um, during the, the case cycle. The fields and layout is also configured based on your business needs, with the most important piece coming into play is how do you want to report down the road? So we want to make sure that we have the ability to flag um, cases so that we can uh, report on the critical things to your, your business moving forward. Activities are used to document communication with your customer and drive the resolution process forward. Activities can be automatically generated through workflow um, and how the process has been designed, or you can create manual follow-up calls, tasks, things like that, um, maybe assigned to yourself for the future or so assigned to someone else who may need to weigh in on this case before it's resolved. The final step, once you've gone through the case uh, journey, is to resolve the case and make sure that we have that closed. And any kind of follow-up automation that we want to build in can certainly be part of the process. <music>